Hello SGD, I want to show you some of the most complicated stonework that's ever done. Uh, firstly, a common misconception is that Greeks and Romans and other people made perfect square blocks and put them together. For instance, this is focusing on the Parthenon and the Acropolis. No right angle blocks, all the blocks were individually fitted. They're essentially the same polygonal type of stone that you can find in places like Machu Picchu. What's most remarkable is that they took a broken pieces and to preserve them, they then attach them to new bits of stone. So as you see this um, column capital coming down, the light white parts are fresh marble, the others are old marble, and they've been attached, not uh, in a, the polygonal sense. So we've got shattered chaotic surfaces blended by hand to very chaotic, uh, to new stone. Here's an example of a method that they use. And so they line the inside of it with mud and then they bring it together. And then you'll see in a moment that the mud, when it touches, it'll leave a white little mark which shows that there's still a high spot. And then they chisel that down and then they repeat the process until these stones perfectly fit. Now the stone on the right, the one you can see, this is more complex than any 12-sided stone found in, in South America or, or anywhere. This, if you trace out the profile on these stones, and again, compare that to any stone that um, polygonal, you know, impossible, this is just, this is chaos versus order. This is crazy level of stone fitting, going, again, just way above what's, what's happening and what, what's seen as remarkable. Um, on the X or Y, it's chaos every set of the way. So this whole Acropolis project, again, an old piece that's being fitted, you can't get a razor blade into the gap. And what they did was use this ancient technique. It was not laser scanned, high precision machinery and that type of stuff. It was the old techniques that they used to bring these stones. So there's an examples of, like that surface is so chaotic, comp again, compared to anything in Peru, this is on a magnitude's more complexity. Uh, here's a Elgin's where he cut the um, uh, Elgin's marbles where he took those uh, sculptures away. We just see the cut marks. Big again, that sort of separate issue. But uh, yeah, people you know by hand, people used to cut with you know sort of big saws as well. But so when you look, you no, know, every little white spot there is a stone that has been chaos has been carved out of another piece and attached to preserve it. Uh, all of those, for instance, Peruvian stones, even the more complex ones, have basically like a cup and saucer attachment. Uh, this is, you know, again, absolute chaos, um, but, but using these techniques, they were able to form these stones. It wasn't just sort of roughly get them together, glue it and put some plaster or something in the middle these stones were fitted on high, high precision. So um, uh, this is uh, like an example of the, work, you know, this is how a stone, even with a steel tool, it's, what's, what would be the difference with a, a stone tool? It's very slow, patient work. So there's a steel, you can see the broken part in the middle where, where the fellas are working on. That is going to be fitted. To, you know, again, this is just simply uh, more complex than the, the, the you know, it, awesome awesome work of the Peruvians um, uh, of the Inca but when they say this is impossible it can't be replicated well it actually is not only being replicated with ancient techniques I have to say this is on a whole other level this is again look at that surface that, that does not compare when, whether you're on the X Y or Z axis that's chaos if you look at the X Y or Z axis of those polygonal stones in Peru they're pretty, you know, smooth and, and uniform. The most you can say is like the 12 sided stones, but this has got more than 12 sides. That has thousands of sides and really complex curves and they're fitted uh, together. Now, Saxa Weimar and the size of stones, separate issue for the moment, but most of the stones in Peru, uh, Machu Picchu, uh, Alante, Tambo, the, the fitted polygonal stones are very uh, smaller than you go to any old cathedral or something like that, you know, the stones are only really a couple hundred kilos or even less in those cases. Saxa Weimann's very out there because of the size of a stone, but the weights of those is grossly exaggerated um, as well. 
this is just a cool little bit because again it just shows that uh, how to create a put the column drums are perfectly flat very simple process you just grind it down this is sort of a cool bit because again they're using ancient techniques you know so in, rather than get some fancy new paint um, or uh, engineering dye they rub it down with grass and it's probably again the you know the past masters have learned it doesn't stain probably you know all for you know they know their reasons you know the, the, the experienced people why they would do it this way and again it's simple primitive technology works here's another example of the high spots being chiseled down repainted and then they're going to touch the stone again again you cannot tell me that this complexity of fitting is not as not as good is more complex than anything in in peru or anywhere else in the polygonal world um this again you can just see the profile it's chaos uh, as opposed to you know uniform sort of ordered polygon don't take nothing away from those ancient polygonal stone builders but these guys are refitting polygonal stone because these stones are, are all unique they're refitting them from broken pieces so again this is just on a on a, another level and this is done um here today now then this is not a historical recreation society so where it suits them they're using modern methods and modern tools but the fitting they still use that ancient principle because it works better more efficient than using super expensive machines and those you know cncs and 3d um scanning equipment and so again now we see the beauty of the old and the new sort of coming here together but the beauty for me is that the, the old way still is the uh the better way at least for some features and that's that really delicate high high quality really complicated work it still comes down to skilled artisans practicing their craft again using like a, a pantograph as it's called or a uh, scribing tool and again using that uh, grass um, as the dye probably again it washes off better doesn't stain maybe it's low acid um, and yeah just the, the process of of stone work so this is an ancient temple but it's another perfect example plumb lines rather than using a laser uh, grid or something like that these old ancient techniques they, they're proven to work they've been proven just throughout time they work so well they never need to be calibrated there's no you know don't they don't run out of batteries uh, just you saw a flash of another example of where these broken shattered pieces are being fitted together reconstructed so it'd be one thing to carve these stones, but again, these guys are taking it to the next level where they're fixing broken stone. That's something in, entirely, uh, on a, again, on another level. Um, yeah, so the, the thing about polygonal stone, I'll do a little bit more on, on this, but I just want to put this piece out there. I'll see how it goes. Sometimes they get uh, copyright um, blocked. Uh, again, whenever I put something, look, I don't monetize because it's other, you know, it's uh, I don't monetize it these type of videos because it's the uh, their content um, when I put these uh, super cuts up together. But uh, yeah, and in some cases, yeah, they they use uh, they're replacing the old steel um, and lead pieces with titanium because uh, and it's some of the structural pieces they do use uh, steel bracing because you can't sort of stick together a broken stone if it's going to be under a lot of weight but uh, whenever I only do that when it's necessary to the structural element of it but again this is just uh, you know in so, so the, 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 the mystery the intrigue about that those old stone like how did they fit these things together well without a time machine we'll never know for sure but the theories that have been put forward uh, what's actually being put into practice as best practice in places such as the Acropolis uh, Restoration Project and it's not just one rare little piece that's an exception like it's all over the site the, um, and not just in, again across the whole Acropolis this is what's happening now I'm going to let the next bit run because this like the cup and saucer fitting as with those stones in Peru we're going to go well this is marble well Saxo Wyman is essentially marble 
but you go, oh, well, the other parts are granite or andesite. Well, is that still happening? You, yes, beautiful, perfectly fit granite, not just the flat surface on flat surface, but like in Peru, that sort of cup and saucer shape and Ayurvan Temple in Hawaii, they're still doing it now. Mark a line, they can make a straight line across that uh, line by carving it with this tool. And this is for sizing the stones. They need yes. to have it the size they want. Exactly. So, look at <laughs> okay, everybody on that side come this side. They're going to fly on that your direction through the river. So this is the chisel you get when you first graduate on the carving. He's being very gentle. This is when they whack it, when the stone will fly, you know, 50 yards or so. <laughs> and what's he doing here? Is he smoothing out the stone? So right now, on the stone joinery, your main concern is the top edge, side, on the bottom, and everything. So on the stone, the bottom is curved, like a cup, mm -hmm. like a saucer. Mm -hmm. That's why it forms the stability. You cannot have a stone carved flat. Mm -hmm. You have to make a slight curve inside. Mm -hmm. For the mortar? For the mortar also for the load to be distributed only on the edge. Mm -hmm. You don't want the load to right in the dead center. Mm -hmm. On a stone, when you set a stone on a... a boulder or something, you always put the support on the two edges, never in the center. You put it in the center, it just break. So you want the load to be distributed all around on all four sides. In order to do that, you make the interior part of it curve. Okay, you can take a look at it, what he did. He's stuck going down. 